We're talking about movies. All right, that time of year. Another year has come and gone. The top 10 films of the year. I don't know if this was a historic year for film. I don't think there were any all-time classics like Shrek out there, but there were some good ones along the way. Look, I'm a regular, hard-working American. I have responsibilities, so I didn't get to see everything this year due to life and the stresses of life that you can't escape. But look, guys, I tried my best, and here are the 10 best films that I saw this year. So coming in at number 10, I have The Marvels. Kidding, kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, calm down. Number 10, I have the Super Mario Bros. movie. Look, I was a little critical about this at first, but I've come around. This is a fun movie. It made a ton of money. has some great animation. I do think the story is a little weak, but this is a movie I'll show my future children. I'm sure they'll love. As someone who doesn't know a ton about the Mario brand and all that, I thought it was fun. The voice cast led by Chris Pratt all did well. I think it's a good watch. I got it at number 10. Number nine, coming out of left field, I have Missing. Look, I love a good murder mystery. It's probably one of my favorite genres of film. This one is a little less conventional as it takes place all on the computer, like its predecessor, Searching. I do think Searching is the better movie, as that one is a little more grounded. But this is a good film that uh, isn't easy to guess, kind of keeps you on your toes, edge of your seat. Good performances, good twists, and I think it's like a good watch if you're into that genre. I got it at nine. Number eight, look, a fan of Ezra Miller, I am not. But all that aside, The Flash is a good movie. I love the stuff with Batman, both Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton steps back into the role after like decades and just knocks it out of the park. If this is the last we've seen of Ben Affleck as Batman, it was a great run. Zack Snyder's Snyderverse has always has a special place in my heart. I love how it ties back into Man of Steel, but given that the CGI is horrible, you have to know that going in. But if you can get past that, the time travel stuff is really good. It's a good storyline. And despite the off-screen problems, Andy Muschietti turned in a good film. All right, coming in at seven, I got Creed Three, Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. And you could tell that he gets a lot of influence from anime in it. I thought a lot of the shots that you could tell were based from that were really cool. I thought he did a good job. I do think this is the weakest of the Creed films. You really miss Rocky in it and the presence that he brings. Stallone always carries this franchise. So I think not having him in there is kind of a deterrent to the film. Back-to-back -back films with some uh, legal troubles. Jonathan Major in this one he does provide a great antagonist in the film it's easy to root against him and at the end of the day that's the job of a villain um, it's still a good end of the trilogy I don't know if they'll continue it I've heard rumors they'll make a fourth one but if this is the end it bookmarks a solid trilogy that really came out of nowhere years after Rocky to make a Creed trilogy I thought it was great number seven number six I have Oppenheimer look this is an expertly made film I'm a Christopher Nolan guy and I thought he did a great job with this I'm a big history fan and I feel like I learned a lot about a story I didn't know a ton about now I will say this is a little bit of a not a super fun movie I'm not sure of the rewatchability of it I'm glad I saw it but I don't know when I would revisit it unlike some of Nolan's other movies like Inception or The Dark Knight I do think when we get to award season you'll see this nominated along with Killian Murphy for lead actor Robert Downey Jr. for supporting actor and Christopher Nolan will probably get a best director nod. It's very informational, very well made film. I thought it was really cool, just like the history aspects of it, Albert Einstein, how it all tied in. So, really well made movie. I got it at six. So, into the top five, and the top five is actually pretty solid. At five, I'm going to put John Wick 4. This is a high octane action film at its finest. The fight choreography is so good. Keanu Reeves is John Wick. He knows what his strengths are. He knows that he just has to walk around, be cool, and say yeah a few times. I don't think the film is perfect. I think it's a little too long, and I would have liked to see him go after the High Council a little more. That's kind of what they set up in the third one was that he was going to go after them, and he didn't really go after them. But it's still a great movie. The Dragon Breast shotgun scene is so cool. The scene when they're in uh, Japan with all the like bow and arrow ninjas and everything is super cool. Uh, Donnie Yen does awesome as his blind friend that's still like a top 10 assassin. So you can't really ask for more. There's ninjas, there's great action. There's like a 10 minute staircase scene. Really good movie. Coming in at number four is Air. I discussed earlier how great Ben Affleck is as Batman. He's also a great director. I really enjoy his films and Air is no exception. This is a really good movie. I said earlier also I'm a big history guy. Um, I love that it's a true story. You can learn about how the most famous basketball shoe ever came to be. The acting in it is super good. It's a really easy watch. You can learn something new and see some high quality filmmaking at the same time. Really recommend Air. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was my third favorite movie this year. Some people were touting it as the best comic book movie ever. I won't go that far, but it is a good movie. The story of Miles and Gwen is fresh and new. You add in Peter B. Parker, even though he's not in it a ton, 
and they got this whole spider society led by uh, Miguel O'Hara. It's just it's just really cool. There's a lot of ton of great Spider-Man lore in this. I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but I think the first one's better. Um, a little more narratively strong. I like how the first one is a one whole story. This one leaves off on a cliffhanger. But it sets up the third film really, really well. And I'm really excited to see the third one, even though it probably won't come out till I'm 85 years old. But yeah, some great animation here. Great story being told. Number three. All right, so number two, the runner-up film for the year is James Gunn's MCU swan song, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And if Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is any indication of how James Gunn's DCU future will be, I think they're going to be just fine. The conclusion of this Guardian story is action-packed and heartfelt. It seems sad we won't get another Guardians of the Galaxy film, but what Gunn did with this franchise is great. He brought us a team of characters we cared about for over 10 years and will continue to care about for years to come. So number one, best film of the year I saw was Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Tom Cruise knows how to make blockbusters. The man drove a motorcycle off a cliff, for heaven's sakes, people. The action is great. The storyline they have set up is great. I love the music and how they weave it in throughout the action. The sequel has sadly already been delayed, but I'm excited to see what stunts and conclusion they come up with for it. It's a really good movie, really good acting. They introduce new characters. They bring back old ones. Tom Cruise is great as always the best film I saw this year. But hey, thanks for checking out this video. This marks the end of the first full year on the channel. If you'd like to join us for 2024, hit that subscribe button and make sure to leave a like. Thanks for all you do. We'll be back in 2024.